Okay, it seems to be 2 o'clock, so um, we will start. The session name is 4K Acquisition, the possibilities and challenges, but it's actually going to be a little broader than acquisition. We're going to go all the way from inside your brain to the display. So I'm going to start with a presentation on 4K from 40,000 feet. And uh, the asterisk there indicates that uh, there are lots of different types of things that are called 4K. 4K could be 4096 by 3072. That's in a 4 by 3 aspect ratio, uh, like a 35 millimeter film frame. It can be 4096 by 2160. It could be 4096 by 2048. It can be 3840 by 2160, which is uh, sometimes called Quad HD. Uh, the Consumer Electronics Association just decided this year to call it UHDTV, which unfortunately is the same thing that NHK was calling 8K for a long time. So it's kind of confusing, but everything that's in the ballpark of approximately 4,000 picture elements across is fair game for this session. So what is the view of 4K from 40,000 feet? looks exactly the same as standard definition. You can't even see a television set down there. Okay, times have changed. This is a report that was issued in 1935 to the British Parliament about high-definition television. And they define high-definition television and say it should be not less than 240 lines. Now, all of this is based supposedly on visual acuity. The thing at the left is the familiar eye chart that you see when you go to your ophthalmologist or optometrist. It's called a Snellen chart. It's named after a Dutch ophthalmologist uh, from the 19th century, he came up with the optotypes, what looked like characters on this chart, in 1862. And based on his 1862 work, people say, well, normal vision is 20-20, um, and that works out to 30 cycles per degree, because if you look at the optotype, every feature subtends one arc minute when it's viewed from the appropriate distance. An arc minute is a 60th of a degree. A cycle has a bright part and a dark part. So between the white part and the dark part, uh, that would be one cycle. So 30 cycles per degree for normal vision, 2020 vision. So here's resolution theory. Uh, Bernie Lechner, a researcher at RCA Laboratories, did a study of how far people sit from their TV sets, found that it was nine feet with very little variation. Um, and if you work out the trigonometry, it turns out that a 25-inch 4x3 TV set is about 15 inches tall. Uh, that subtends an angle of 8 degrees at a distance of 9 feet, which would be 15.1 inches. So at roughly 7.2 times the picture height, you meet this 30 cycles per degree criterion, which means if you had a 25-inch standard definition television set at home, you could not see more detail uh, then standard definition was delivering, and HDTV would be useless to you. So why go to HDTV? Well, they have a criterion of 3.2 times the height based on this same theory, so you would need either a larger screen or closer viewing. But is 30 cycles per degree really visual acuity? There's the Snellen chart again. There's the 2020 line. There are three lines below 2020. In NHK's latest research, which they did for their 8K UHD TV system. They had observers who had a measured visual acuity of 2010. Uh, Marty Banks from the Visual Perception Laboratory at um, University of California, Berkeley, says that uh, he thinks that the new normal is someplace in the vicinity of maybe 2012. Uh, that means we can see an awful lot more detail than 2020 would suggest. Now we have another issue. Here's that E from the eye chart, and what do we notice about the E? It's got very, very sharp edges. Well, if we actually presented a sinusoid, it would look more like this, which to me, looking very close to the screen here, I can barely make out it's supposed to be an E at all. Now, there's the sinusoid, and that's what it looks like, the white part, the dark part, and the bright part again. If we add a third harmonic to that, we get a squarer shape. If we add the third, fifth, seventh, and ninth harmonics, we get a still squarer shape. To get really sharp edges like that, we'd have to add an awful lot of art harmonics. 
and those increase the frequency. So if we want to have nice sharp edges, we need something more than what the sinusoidal vision theory should tell us. Now here's something else. It uh, has nothing to do with visual acuity in the sense of how much resolution you can see. There's a chart over here where contrast is increasing towards the top and detail resolution is increasing towards the right. Does everybody see sort of a curve around the bottom of the chart? Okay, I see nodding of heads. There is no curve there. Your visual system is putting that in. And each one of you is seeing the peak of the curve at a different place. Might be over there for some of you, over there for some of you, over there for some of you. Now here's a composite picture that was created by Odo Leva at MIT and Philippe Sheens at the University of Glasgow. And some of you, maybe in the front row, might see an angry looking person on the left over here and a neutral looking person on the right. Uh, those of you in the back of the room might see an angry looking person over here and a neutral looking person over here. Uh, I'm going to hold my hands in the air so you can see I'm not touching anything. If you want to walk around the room, come up towards the screen and go back, you will see that change. You will see which one looks angry and which one looks neutral changing. Go ahead, do it, walk around. So you could actually show a movie with two different movies going on on the same screen at the same time based on this contrast sensitivity function. So contrast plays an enormous role. Anyone, anytime someone says, well, you can see this many cycles per degree or something like that, it's meaningless without contrast being described. Okay, uh, continuing. How about the viewing distance? Well, Bernie Lechner said the viewing distance is nine feet. Maybe it's nine feet, maybe it's not nine feet. Maybe people sit closer, maybe people sit farther. But wherever they sit, two different things are important. One is, if you're watching from a relaxed mode to watching on the edge of your seat, that green line there is a standard yardstick. There's about a three foot difference in viewing distance. No matter where your chair is, no matter where your screen is. So anyone who says, everybody watches from nine feet, meaningless. What are you watching? Are you excited? Is it sports? Are you excited by that? Is it masterpiece theater? And so you're leaning back to enjoy the sumptuousness of it. The other thing that's important to note is when people buy TV sets, they stand really, really close. They're not nine feet away. They're maybe two feet away. And so people buying TV sets can perceive resolution that they couldn't possibly perceive at home. So I mentioned contrast. Here's one reason why shooting 4K might matter. Let's say we have some camera system, some lens system, I'm not defining it, uh, but people might say, okay, it's an HDTV system, so it goes out to 1920 pixels. Well, if this number 11 over here, just an arbitrary number, is 1920 pixels, then the contrast at 1920 pixels is zero. You get a little bit of contrast above 1920, a little bit less than that, um, and eventually 100% contrast down at zero resolution. Well, if this point is 3840 pixels, then the contrast at 1920 is 64%. So even to deliver HDTV, you might want to go to a higher resolution camera. We knew this back in the NTSC days when people typically sold cameras that had 1200 um, image sensors per row for something that was gonna be broadcast through the NTSC standard definition chain. Some other reasons. Let's say you want to reframe in post. You decide the shot wasn't so good, you want to move things around. Well, if this outer rectangle is the 4K, then you can move the shot around, do all kinds of stuff. Or how about image stabilization? If this was the HD that you shot, that orange rectangle, and you wanted that to be stationary, that would be this green rectangle, uh, you can use some sort of image stabilization software, but if you do, you end up with that little rectangle in the middle. So the only way to stabilize the full HD picture is to have something larger like 4K. Another reason, single camera 3D. Take something like a ZPAR lens system, put it on a Phantom 65, side-by-side -side lenses on a single 4K sensor, you get uh, HD in 3D. 
Or for the display end, which Pete will talk more about later, there's passive glasses 3D. If you take an alternate line system where um, one scanning line is a left eye view, one scanning line is a right eye view, then you can use simple passive glasses, not active glasses, no batteries or anything like that. If you have 3840 across, then every, both eyes get 3840. And if it's a 4K system, you get 1080 vertical per eye. There's no temporal difference between the eyes, so you don't have lip sync problems, as were shown at IBC by uh, a Russian paper. Um, and again, very, very cheap glasses. Sony showed this at IBC. It was very, very simple, very um, good-looking 3D.